This is how you come down. Woke up alive again. <laughs> Made it home from uh, being solo in the woods again. And it's absolutely pissing rain out. Finally, in a way. But it's real, real soggy, so it's going to be indoor activities today. And there's no shortage of those stacked up in the old shop here. Now, where to start? I don't think I have anything to ramble about yet, but I'm sure I'll probably come up with something. I think we're going to get right into uh, hearing some recent some recent voices that have come in here. I'll try to keep my lip bit for the time being. Let's see what happens in a few minutes though, right? It's endless. Truth is endless though, right? If it was bullshit, it would taper out. This is titled An Experience in Quebec. Hi, Steve. Here's my experience, but first, thank you for your non-judgmental sharing. Your channel has helped some of the healing. Also, I'll keep my name private since those in my career path would be impacted by those whose minds are not as open as your readers and the people who know. Quick background on me prior to the experience at the age of 11. I grew up in a sleepy suburb of Montreal in an ultra-religious family. No TV, no radio, only Bible and homework for entertainment. This should give you some perspective on my lack of awareness of the real world. Then at the age of 11, my mother separated from my father, and we moved to my aunt-slash-uncle's farm in eastern townships of Quebec near the Vermont border. City kid, oh, hold on a second. City kid, now in the country, but very excited to be around cows, horses, 
and new terrain to explore. Moving to the experience. One that'll try to one that I try to fully comprehend and will share the first of three that occurred all a few weeks apart. I had a neighbor over to play and he was younger than myself, maybe eight or nine. The two of us decided to walk down to the woods and cross into the wood line. Wood line is a key word as I had not heard of this term prior to this day. More on that shortly. My friend Corey and I were looking for a trail to explore some woods. The brush was thick and difficult to get through. Corey was still going to walk down the wood line to see if he could find a way in while I just climbed through the dense brush and see if I could find a path inside. Some details are left out as this was a long time ago, so a few memory gaps, but what is remembered is here. At some point, as I was climbing through the brush, I was frozen against my will. I don't recall how it started, but I remember being face to face with what I described as a 15 to 20 foot demon with red eyes, and it was so scary, and the eyes were not human. Looking back, it was likely closer to 10 to 15 feet, but as a kid, it seemed like it was so huge. I can't explain it. But I was frozen and could not run, scream, or talk. The fear in me led me to release my bowels and mess my pants. You're not the first one, man, so don't feel silly about that one. I never experienced a fear that deep. It felt like my body was in electrical shock and have had anxiety ever since. But back to the moment. The voice rang in my bones and it shouted at me, quote, why did I come into this area, end quote. In my brain, I thought, this thing is a demon, based on having a religious background. And suddenly, more angry, it shouted, quote, you think I'm a demon, end quote. Not wanting to make it angry, I answered no. It then gave me a shock for lying and asked me again. I started to think that if I stick to my story and keep it calm, it would be best. So I said again, no. Then it got really mad. Told me it would crush me or kill me or something fierce for lying. The shock it gave me was so painful, I was certain death was imminent. It said it could read my mind, which confused me. Was it in my head? At this point, I hoped Corey would hear this yelling and run to get my uncle and his gun. This also angered the beast, and he went on to say my uncle was weak and the gun could do nothing. He told me I was disrespectful for thinking of a gun. He was incredibly angry, and he said he could show me what he could do. This is when a large hand grabbed my back, and I realized another one was beside me, but I could not see it. It was almost invisible, like a clear gel. I then started praying, convinced I was about to die. It asked me about my prayer and my religion and scoffed at me for my beliefs. It even asked me what Bible I studied. I said the King James Version, and it asked which one which confused me. It then went on to say, find the older Bible in Latin. He gave me a name and I cannot recall. Eventually the one beside me told me I could go, but not come back. That one was female. I don't know how I know, but I did know. The beast then wanted to show me something. As he taunted me, he could take my soul. He pulled my consciousness out of my body for a few seconds. I could see myself from outside my body, my, my only out-of-body experience I've ever had, and suddenly the female shouted, Stop! You are scaring him. The beast laughed and put me back inside. It felt nice to be out of the body, and the dark-haired monster said to the female, He is enjoying it. The female said, Then I could go home if I promised not to tell anyone. I turned at this point and started walking towards the field to leave the woods, and one of them, I cannot remember who or how, told me to walk slow, and I was convinced I was going to die. It was over for me. As I got close to the edge of the woods, I saw the home about 200 yards across the field and thought, if I can get into the field, my family would see me die in the picture window, and that's better than never finding me. So suddenly, I burst into a sprint, crashing through the brush into the field, running for my life towards home. I then heard Corey say, 
Wait, where are you going? I shouted, run, as I kept my charge. And suddenly the voice appeared beside me and ordered me to stop. I was caught after about 40 to 50 yards. I stopped and slowly turned around, only to see Corey running towards me on an empty field. But the voice of the beast was inches from my face. It said, quote, Why do I continue to lie? And it was angry, end quote. It demanded to know why I was in the woods in the first place. I mentioned I was, I was only playing and started crying and slash sobbing. Then the female told the male to stop and asked me why I was scared. I told her that the one was scary and harming me. She then said there would be no harm to me, and they would overlook me to ensure I was safe if I ever crossed the wood line. Not knowing that word, I looked around and saw a pile of logs behind the barn. I wondered to myself if this is a wood line. She immediately laughed and said, no, the edge of the woods. Play in the field, but stay out of the woods. Corey, beside me, was trying to talk to me and asked me who I was speaking to as he could not hear the voice. He then ran to my family's house, leaving me there talking. With messy pants and tears all over myself, I found a sudden calmness of peace. I walked home and entered the house, only to see everyone sitting and watching TV. My uncle had a TV, which was cool. But I was shocked, as I expected Corey to send the cavalry out to save me. I asked why nobody came to save me, and they seemed annoyed and told me to stop trying to scare Corey. Then, seeing my state, started being angry and told me to clean up. I was sent to my room and told not to talk about it. Later, I came out and asked Corey, who was still there waiting for his parents to pick him up, what he recalled from the event. He immediately jumped up and ran into the kitchen to tell my mother I was talking about it again. I was sent to my room with a stern warning. Traumatized, I recall not eating or moving for three days, my mother trying to feed me. One thing that stuck out was, every time I tried to tell her what happened, I was slapped for lying. And said I'd been listening to my aunt tell her stories at night, which confused me as I had not. Eventually I told my mom that some older kids pushed me into a creek and threatened to drown me. That allowed her to accept my explanation and let me out of, the, out of detention. She bravely asked me to point them out next time so she could turn the tables on them. I said I would, and that was the last I ever spoke of it to her until this year. That was in 1983. She thinks I need mental health assistance as I heard voices that don't exist. I've not ever experienced anything supernatural since that farm and that summer, but I know this happened. There is a second part of the story, and prior to us heading back to the city for a life away from country living, which my mother did not enjoy, until your, until your channel had not connected these beings with Bigfoot or Sasquatch, as this was not an ape or a monkey. I also never heard of a Bigfoot when this incident occurred. Your channel has helped me accept what has occurred. Sincerely, 1983 from Quebec. That's pretty disturbing, man. And confusing. A lot of these are confusing. I just don't understand why, whatever, whoever it was, why give that kind of attention and emotion and time to a child, especially a human child? It doesn't make sense, right? Why would they do that? Why? And what was it? And what did your mother know? What do those people know? You don't beat the crap out of a kid, slap him for telling lies angrily, unless you're scared of the topic. Right? You're scared of the truth. Because if you weren't, you'd be concerned about your child more and what happened than beating them and telling them to shut up. Maybe send this video to your mother if she's still alive, right? Let her know that she's got about, uh, I don't know, a couple million people she, she might have to slap to try to get to shut up at this stage of the game. Not going to happen. I don't understand that kind of time and effort and energy that whoever, whatever that was, threw down on a child in the woods and especially to show that kind of emotion that anger I don't get it very confusing you found a safe place to share it though man appreciate you sending that in you got more send it all and to anybody else send it all in one go right if you can my experience and a possible puzzle piece Hello, Steve. My name is David, and I live in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. 
I'm originally from Kentucky. I'm going to share with you a brief experience that I had that I believe was a Bigfoot encounter, and then something that may be another puzzle piece, I'm not sure. Back in the mid-80s, our neighbors had caught the woods on fire, and of course it was dry all around. It turned into a blaze, all in the woods and on the mountain. After battling the fire, all the firefighters had left, and of course, me and my two nephews, being young, dumb boys, went into the woods and up the mountain to make sure there wasn't any missed brush fires. Really, just to basically do what boys do. As kids, we climbed all over these mountains by ourselves, no adults presence, present. Now, looking back, it probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. The night came about, and I was getting, and was getting really dark. Eddie, one of my two nephews, had left and went back to the house. That just left me and Danny at top of this mountain, and we were about ready to head back as well. But wasn't down exploring just yet. A few minutes had passed, and on the, and on the opposite side of the mountain, we heard this heavy-sounding set of footsteps coming towards us. We couldn't see anything. First, we thought it may have been one of the firefighters, but it sounded way heavier, more like an elephant on two feet. We yelled out several times, but no one replied, and it did not stop. It kept coming toward us. We sent out one last shout, asking whatever it was to identify their, their selves. No response. The air was full of smoke, and it was dark, but we were on top of a freshly burnt mountain, and it made no sense why someone would be coming towards us without responding. We looked at each other, and both of us, without saying a word, took off. We started running down the mountain. We were more afraid of what was coming toward us than we were of getting hurt or tripping over something. Steve, that was almost 40 years ago, and I remember it like yesterday. I'd asked my nephew about this incident a few weeks ago, thinking he probably didn't remember any of it. And he recalled in the same way that I did, like it was yesterday, fresh in our minds. Now the piece of the puzzle that I'm not sure so sure about. Last Friday, I'd gotten home from work around 9 p.m., which is a little later than normal. I had supper with my wife, and we watched TV for a bit, and she dozed off on the couch. I had gotten up to use the restroom by our spare bedroom. My wife was snoozing on the couch, and I have two dogs that were still asleep on the floor as well. I'm probably in the bathroom for just two or three minutes. I begin to hear something stumbling through the house, bumping into furniture and coming down the hallway toward the bathroom. The noise stopped for a second, and there was a single tap on the bathroom door with a finger, or at least what sounds like a finger. Just one tap, and all the noise stops. I'm listening closely for 30 seconds. I thought maybe my wife had woken up and she was letting me know that she was going to, going to go to bed. And after my 30 second pause, the noise starts up again in our daughter's bedroom. She had left for college earlier this year. It sounded like something bumped into her bed, causing the bed to make a dragging noise. At this point, I get freaked out a little, I run out of the bathroom. I look around through the whole house and nothing. My two dogs are laying on the living room floor asleep. I have a cockapoo and a Yorkie, but both of them snoozing. My wife is still asleep on the couch snoozing. I'm beside myself, freaking out. There's nothing in her house except for us. But this time it's getting a, little, getting a little late. I let the dogs out. Then wake my wife up and get her to go to bed. I did not tell her anything that just happened. I put the dogs in the area which is an is which was the is which is the entrance way foyer, which is in the room next to our bedroom. <clears throat> I have it blocked off so they cannot get into our room. I'm a light sleeper and they always wake me up if I don't keep them out of the room. My wife goes to our master bathroom by her bedroom and I turn the lights out and just lay down. And just a minute or two goes by, she opens up the bathroom door, turns on the bathroom lights, and proceeds to head toward the bed. And all of a sudden, I hear something crash against the dresser. And that sounds like it scooted it back three or four feet. It sounded like my wife had fell or tripped over something. Before I get a, a word out, I hear a scream. Quote, what is that? What is that? What is that, Dave? This, of course, caused me to jump out of the bed and turn the lights on. And there's nothing in our room that I can see. She's shaken up, emotionally. I ask her if she is okay, and if she tripped over something. She yells at me, no, no. She proceeded to tell me when she walked out of the bathroom that she heard a deep growl. 
one with a deep voice, and it did not sound anything like a dog growl. More like a, more like a heavy wolf and the eerie twist to it. And here I am just experiencing what I did, and then seeing her shaken up with whatever she experienced. I don't know, tell her what happened to me before we lay down, because I knew she would be afraid. But now I'm thinking in my head, what in the world is this? I've checked the whole house out. The dogs are in the other room, just looking at us, wondering what's going on. Steve, I see nothing. The doors are locked. I go outside and look around the house. On the outside as well, nothing. I lay back down. The whole time saying the Lord's Prayer and asking for protection and sleeping with one eye open, lol. Everything was quiet for the rest of the night. And the next morning, there was nothing weird, nor, there, nor had there ever been since. We've been in this house for about eight years. The next day, I did go to work. And when I came home, my wife said, I need to talk to you. Steve, usually that's not a good thing. I sit down beside her and she proceeds to tell me that she had laid down for an afternoon nap. She had taken this week off for a, for a staycation to catch up on some other things. She said when she was just about to go to sleep, something sit down on the couch with her and the cushion went down a couple of inches. She looked for the dogs, thinking maybe one of them had jumped off the couch, but both of them were on the floor just laying there. She said she got freaked out and walked around the house for a while. To quiet her mind, she began to put out some fall decorations. I'm thinking to myself that dogs usually can see things we cannot. And in none of these instances, are they alerted by anything or did they alert us to something weird? To me, that's strange. A picture that she showed me. To keep her mind occupied, she had put out some decorations on the front of the door of her house, in addition to the inside. You'll zoom in on the bottom left. It looks like several small, or was it just that night and the next day? Sorry. Let me read that sentence again. In addition to the inside, if you zoom in on the bottom left, it looks like several small, or was it just that night and the next day nothing has happened since? Several small what? Well, that changed yesterday. I received a phone call, and the nephew that I had had the experience with running down the mountain as kids from something we had no idea what was, Danny, my nephew, died during the night, exactly one week from the tap on my bathroom door that freaked me out. I'm puzzled. I don't know what to make out of it. I'm not sure if anyone else had anything similar happen to them. End o email. All right, so I guess, so here, let's show the first picture you sent with the fall decorations in the house. And the next photo is zoomed in on the door. Oops, hold on a minute. And that is several small. Well, I don't know what that is either. Several, several small dents. On the bottom left of the door. There you go. Very odd story. Um, the first part of the story, running down the woods, hearing the elephant on two legs, that's pretty common in, on this channel, in the woods, with a lot of people sending in. Um, but what's going on in your house? I haven't a clue. It's nothing I'm interested in if it's ghost story. I'm not, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not interested in your story. It's just, I'm not into that shit myself. It kind of freaks me out, right? Um, I've had a ghost encounter one time with, without a doubt. It was whatever you want to call it. A ghost, a spirit, an entity, I don't know what. Once, years ago, at someone else's house. I'm just not into it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be a flood of comments in the comment section below. On what happened in your second part? Without a doubt. Well, keep an eye, keep an eye on the comment section below, right? People are going to chime in. Appreciate the share. I'm glad it's not happening all the time. <clears throat> wow. Um, why is my phone acting like an idiot here? Hold on a minute. All right. Um, why is this not marking as red? I do not know. Hold on a minute, you guys. Sorry. Got it. All right, here we go. Listen to this. 
Steve, please do not use my name. Gotcha, man. You shared my story a couple years ago. I thought I'd send you this short clip if you wanted to post it on your channel as I don't have one. I was bow hunting in Colorado yesterday, and this stunning event occurred 20 yards from me. Ignore the date on the video, I never changed it from when, from when I bought it, meaning the camera, right? I heard what I thought could be an animal walking on a trail to my right. I backed into a spot under some trees. I also heard something down in the woods to my right, which I thought was a bird, as they make all kinds of noises in the leaves. Excuse me. As it turned out, that noise was the cat sneaking up on the bull. The bull stood up, stood for about 30 seconds at the tree line, studying if it was safe to proceed. Isn't it interesting how humans can be more stupid than animals? If there's something that doesn't smell right, we'll still proceed with the deal. That's when I got my arrow knocked and turned my camera on. He must have seen the cat, and then he darted out and the cat followed. The cat didn't even seem to have a chance, as he casually loped a little far behind. It makes me feel better sometimes that even nature's hunters fail more often than we'll ever know. I was so blessed to have seen that all 20 yards from me, and as it turned out, that noise to my right in the thick scrub was not a bird, but the cat, and it had to know I was there, but didn't care about me. It makes me wonder... The hundreds of times a cat has seen me just off the tree line on the trails, but refused to attack the human. I looked up on YouTube as many as many lion slash elk or lion slash deer encounters as I could, and most are from a trail camera or a spotting scope with a camera from a long way away. This was twenty yards personal encounter, a once in a lifetime event. I'm glad I, and I'm glad I turned my camera on. I also have a cool bear encounter who came to seven yards from me a few weeks ago on film. And how poised I was. If you want to post it, let me know. Thanks, Steve. P.S. I sent you a follow-up account about two years ago. About two years ago from this email, but you never read it. With pics. If you want to search for it. It talks about little people, native testimony, and historical accounts of Sabe. As well as some more personal experiences with what I believe is the proper worldview in which to interpret these things. The worldview works, believe me, as I have very little fear now going out there. P.S. You can crop the video and start it at about 22 seconds and finish it at about 55 seconds if you want. All right, let's have a look and see if I can download this. I hope so after reading this. Hold on a minute. All right, while I'm reading this, I can't say anything on the video because I downloaded it to my laptop, tried to open up my phone, wouldn't play it. It seems any video that comes to me AVI file doesn't play. And I've had a few new trail cameras save files in AVI, and it sucks because I have to watch either on the small screen of the camera, and the only other way around is to load it onto YouTube as private. And then once it's switched to, to HD, SD or something, whatever, then I can save the video to my laptop from YouTube, and then I can add it to the video. So that's what I'm doing now. It says 19 more minutes to go. So, <laughs> while it's doing that, I'll, I'll hit this next email. Hopefully it works out. I watch your show regularly. I find it very interesting and informative. I will relate a couple of experiences that I've, that I've had. I'm now a senior. I hunted and fished with my father since age 12. He's no longer here on this earth, but I continue to enjoy hunting in the outdoors. One incident when I was in my 20s. I was hunting on my father's 2,000 acre lease. It was very swampy with thick brush. There was one spot extremely thick, about six acres, that I never had the courage to go into. I tried to hunt that spot several times, but on each occasion, I suddenly, unexpectedly, had a feeling of imminent danger and disaster that just stopped me in my tracks. At the time, I was carrying a pistol and a 12-gauge pump Winchester shotgun loaded with buckshot and slugs. I just knew, however, that would not be enough firepower to keep whatever it was in that small patch of swamp from tearing me limb to limb. That's pretty interesting, right? Alarming. I never saw or heard anything, but I just knew it was there. 
Another more recent experience comes to mind about seven years ago. I was walking out of the swamp, different location, as it was getting dark. As I was returning to my Jeep, I came to about a 150 yards section of the path that was extremely thick with brush and vines. About halfway through that part of the path, I became aware that something was walking right along with me. It was seven or eight feet to my left, on the other side of very thick vines. There was just enough ambient light for me to make out part of the rear end. The top of the back I could make out was about four feet high, and the back hips and legs seemed to be angled slightly higher than the shoulders. It had short, not long, hair or fur. I couldn't make out a color. Until I noticed if there was until I noticed it. Until I noticed it, there was no feeling of fear or being hunted, no premonition of danger. When I did notice it, however, I got so scared I almost wet my pants. As the quote unknown one, end quote. And I got to the open field at the end of the path. I levered around into the 308 I was carrying and prepared to defend myself. I never got a clear view of what it was. There was no odor. It walked and stopped when I did. It never came out into the open, so I have not at this point had eye-to-eye contact with an unknown species. But I know that they do exist and are out there with us in the woods. Another memory of hunting with my dad in the swamp. We were leaving the land at, at near dark after day of hunting in the swamp. A local farmer who lived near the main dirt road where we turned in saw us and motioned for us to pull over to the fence line where he was working. We stopped, got into a friendly conversation with him, and he told us we were doing the smart thing, leaving before it got fully dark. He said he'd been living there for over 40 years and that his family had seen and heard things moving around and screaming after dark in the swamp that not that were not humans or animals that they recognized. We shook his hand, thanked him, and we never again hunted that part of the swamp. That is the same area that I had the sense of foreboding that stopped me from entering further. Thank you for hearing my story, Joe L. Joe, appreciate you sharing your story, man. Pretty odd and alarming, right? It's kind of weird, though, in a way. I mean, if we all if we were all living like actual communities, like we used to in the past, remember those days? Remember we used to be a community when all the people that we elected to take care of us, protect us, would band together and come and deal with problems that the community was having? So just picture this one. So that particular swamp, they've been hearing and seeing things that are not normal for how long, yet no, quote, authorities, end quote, have got, say, I don't know, a whole bunch of equipment, some military gear, and went in there and surrounded that swamp and stormed through, stormtrooped through it to rid that swamp of whatever was terrifying the community. I'm not saying that's the right or wrong thing to do. I'm just saying back in the day, didn't everybody go out and eliminate the threat? find out what's going on in there and make everybody safe again instead of just going, okay, there's a whole bunch of real terrifying, scary shit in that timber right there. We're not going to go there anymore. End of story. <laughs> is that weird? Just kind of weird if you look at it from that angle, right? Kind of odd. Kind of odd. Well, normally, as a community, we should be uh, fully investigating and eliminating threats to our children, our families, right? Maybe. Possibly. Or at least having some answers for the community of what exactly is in there. But we're not. That's why we're here. We're doing what we can for each other, right? What do we got here? <clears throat> Excuse me. More. These are all recent, by the way. Every one of these emails has come in recently. Let's see if that email that video's ready yet.
Video came through. Definitely a rare one. <laughs> Not that of an uncommon scene, but to catch it on, on video, that's pretty rare, man. Lucky you hit the record button on that. Too bad he didn't catch the elk right in front of him. You could have went and took it from him. <laughs> I've seen some rare shit in the woods. The more time you're out there, stuff happens, right? It would have been crazy if that cat took that elk down right there in front of you. And then you got it on video. It would have been crazy. Right place at the right time, right? Okay, one more email titled, What do we need from Sabe? Question mark. Hello again, Steve. Thanks for all you do, sharing our voices. I sent in a share about two years ago called Little Foot. It was about an encounter with a female Sabe in South Carolina. I never heard it read. My name is Jack B, and you can say my name, that is. I'm still ongoing in this sighting, and last name will only cause me problems, I believe. I was camping with a friend about three plus years ago, upstate Newberry area. It was a great day. My friend Clint and I were fishing, drinking a few beers, both in our 50s, and set up camp on a river overlook slash mud bank on the Sal on the Saluda River. As night rolled in, the temperatures dropped fairly fast. I had my tent set up in the back of my pickup. My buddy had a taco hammock type sleeping bag. I call feeders, lol. He hung it to his ladder rack so we'd be safe from the roaming ground critters also. We could hear a pack of about 8 to 12 coyotes sp sparring and having nightly meetings a couple hundred yards away across the river. And as our fire was not really keeping us warm, just really just an animal warning there and, and free light, it started getting down into the lower 40s. And I decided my double cab Yoda interior would provide more comfort. Not, lol. Even my buddy bailed out of his single cab for... for... For to sleep straight up. Oh, sorry. Even my buddy bailed out of his single cab to sleep straight up. I had my 380 on my lap and a cell phone on a mag mount on the dash. So a long night of tossing and turning, seeing shadows in the woods around us moving. The cab was a good choice. Eventually I passed out. I woke around 5.45 a.m. and it's just getting daylight. A slight fog from the river was in the air. We were about 18 feet above water, so it wasn't a thick fog. I look out of my driver's door facing the forest, and there she stood, side view, 16 feet from my truck door, arms to her side, 6 foot 5 inches to 7 foot tall, 200 pounds maybe more, thin body, brownish red hair. The hair came slightly below the shoulders. It had varying lengths on different body areas. Her face had very little hair, big friendly looking black eyes, somewhat flattened human looking nose and lips that were a little wider than a person. A few wear lines slash normal human looking dimples had a semi smile on her face. Her breasts were her her breast with fine more reddish brown hair, one direction like a chimp and grapefruit sized and medium nipple size, brownish. Chest was layers of fine hair down to the abdomen area. Defined abdomen, I'll add. And a darker skin tone, grayish slash brown. The hair on the thighs was thicker. Like the arm hair, yet very soft in appearance. And overall clean looking. The feet, the feet from the knees down were thicker looking, maybe thicker hair, especially ankle, were very thick, almost as to guard briars and leg damage. It looked thick, almost like fur boots or guard, if that makes sense. It was the same color. Could not see the feet from the hair. She was standing by a holly tree, and the ground was hard, red mud and rock conglomerate with leaves, no tracks. And now this is me. I'm like, holy F, what the F? Then, in looking up and down and, and triple taking the breast, lol, that's just me, and I say, what's up? And yes, in a crazy way, she was very interesting indeed to me. I make the mistake of reaching for my phone to get that million dollar pick, 
and I turn back to align my shot and she's gone. And I jumped out of the truck to go to go see the height and look for tracks and I see if she's still in sight possibly. I had an overwhelming sense to communicate with this being. There was no smell of any type. I returned home 40 miles away and she has been mind speaking me to come back and I'm going back. The title of this is What Do We Need From Sabe? Well, I'm going to find that out. I think the information they have of truth would outweigh anything we have any clue of on so many levels at the risk of going missing. I have no issues going unarmed with this one and, and do a meet and greet. There was a reason that I was approached by this female and the greeting smile received told me a lot. If I have to leave my phone gun behind, so be it. Someone's got to cross this barrier, barrier in my opinion. I'm old enough, I don't, I don't much care anymore. The learning experience to me would be worth any risk. She was of our gene pool. No doubts to me now. I did have, I did have a larger male come to my home within two weeks after this and was staring in my window of my home. I won't shoot anything that's not making an attempt at me of ill will. I have a picture of this I'll attempt to attach. Thanks, Steve. You're good people, man. If this works out and I and I don't get missing, I'll welcome you to come and meet the Joneses also. Talk to you, Jack, a.k.a. AKA Joe Beam. P.S. I have more to share. I have hundreds of good UFO picks and a handful of out-of-the-normals. Dogman is real. I had three experiences with them. Two running beside my vehicle. Some some as hitting the gas and it, and it keeping up with the car up to 60 miles per hour as it's turning its head looking in the window as it runs along the side of the car. So there's that. Thank you, Steve. Wow. So that's a bit of a freaking email there, isn't it? And this is recent, I believe, isn't it? Yep. Sent today, or yesterday, or I saved it today, so... Let's see what comes at this point. Let's hope you don't go missing. Or are you possibly going to father something kind of hairy? <laughs> Just kidding, man. Or am I? Now, how should I do this? I think I'll save these photos to the video itself because it's... Um, you probably, you probably need to see them full screen and steady instead of me holding my phone in front of the screen, all right? Wow. That's a creepy thing in the window, especially at eight feet. Eight feet to the middle, or the bottom X in the window. So that puts this thing, what, eight foot? Eight foot, who knows what? It's over eight feet, and it looks kind of creepy to me. All right, man. Keep us posted. Let's see what goes down. I wish you luck. Who knows, maybe if this is all legitimate, um, and it works out, and you get some straight answers. I won't hold my breath at this point of the game, because so far, nobody has had any straight answers. That I, I believe nobody has had a straight-up, honest conversation. I do not believe yet, myself, but that's just me. I believe some people have had tidbits, um, not anything with any real substance delivered to them in, in, har in harmless ways. But when it comes to absolute substance and truthful, full-on answers, nope, they're not into it. No one yet, I don't think, right? Maybe I'm wrong. So far, I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, one more. One more. Red? Not red. Here we go. I better mark this as red right now. We're going to screw up and make somebody blow a gasket. <clears throat> Excuse me. Orb in Washington. Hello, Steve. My name is Nick. I've been watching your channel for maybe two months now. Which channel is your primary YouTube channel? The facts or the round table? The facts is. The round table is the backup because sometimes uh, YouTube doesn't wait, like the way I speak and they kick me off of here. So to counter them, we have the backup channel going nonstop. 
And what's the difference between the two? I just shared that. Thank you for putting content out for me to watch while I stay home and take care of my wife and newborn baby. My story took place a few years ago. 2021, I think. I was camping with my mother, stepdad, stepbrother, and maybe five of my stepdad's friends. This camping spot is on the east side of Mount St. Helens in Washington State, on a cliff that overlooks a canyon. Around 11 p.m. one night, my stepdad, stepbrother, stepdad's friend, and his wife were looking at the stars while standing near the cliff's edge. It is a heavily wooded area, with some pretty tall and steep hills, and as we looked at the stars, I made mention of the fact that one star above a hill a ways up in the canyon appeared to be moving. I was halfway joking when I said this. I think I was the one who saw it first, and after I said that, it appeared to get bigger and started to move side to side and up and down. Then it made its way towards us, high above the canyon. The thing took a hard turn to our side of the canyon, then became obscured by the trees that surrounded us. We just stood there and said, That was weird and wondered if maybe it was a drone or something. It was way too close to be a helicopter. It was only a few hundred feet away. A minute or two later, it came out of the trees on the right side, on our right side, so it must have circled behind our camp because it entered the trees in the plateau above the canyon to our left. I just happened to glance to my right when I saw it float out of the trees. This orb light, or whatever it was, floated halfway across the canyon and made its way to open air and then just disappeared. It didn't shoot off really fast. The thing just disappeared. At that point, we were beside ourselves because none of us had ever seen anything like that before. I was 17 at the time. We stood there talking for another hour and didn't see anything else, but I was freaked out. I went in my tent, terrified that I would wake up strapped to a table with little green men poking at me. No doubt. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen anything like that since. I want to know what you think about this. I've heard mention before of these orbs being related to Sasquatch or other cryptids. Is there any truth to that? I honestly have no idea what it was. This event occurred in the next canyon over from Ape Canyon, a place in which a group of gold miners was supposedly attacked in their cabin by a group of for ape men a hundred or so years ago. I'm hoping you can shed some light on this. Thanks again, Steve. Keep on keeping on. Happy fall hunting season. Nick from Washington State. Nick, yeah, you nailed it. I don't know about the hundred years ago. I think it was uh, less than that. Ape Canyon for sure, and they're investigated a lot. And it all, all of the eyewitnesses, the, the men that were there and involved in that gunfight, um, testimonies were all exactly the same, and they passed lie detector tests. And uh, yeah, the bright lights have accompanied uh, sightings of these people I don't know how many times. It's almost to the point now, if you see a bright light in the timber, you're probably going to see something really weird not too far after that. Not every time, but it's common. So yeah, question answered. Definitely, definitely go together. Bright lights in the sky, bright lights in the forest followed by or before or the same time with one of these odd human-like beings. And pff, Mount St. Helens, absolute no shock there at all. Not even a hint of surprise for that area. And there you go, my man. Appreciate the share. Appreciate it. It's funny how when shit goes down, not too many people think about recording, right? I know I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm definitely guilty. Myself. Now, I'm going to get moving, I think. I better get moving. i got a lot of stuff to do inside and finally get caught up on getting stuff done in here. And then, uh, and then I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to keep the ball rolling. i got a lot I could probably ramp, rant about right now, but maybe I'll keep it a rant-free day. And uh, no promises for tomorrow. <laughs> Share my story, howtohunt.com. Get it into us. Get your truth shared. It's the only way you're going to get truth. It's from each other. It's the only way. Right? Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Anyway, as the world unravels, crazy shit going down all over the frickin' place. What do you feel? I got one question before I go. Throw it down in the comment section below if you want. 
What are you, what do you find if you are following what's going on around the globe today? What is it, what is it? I'm curious to know what it is that you find yourself watching more of currently right now. What are you keeping tabs on right now? When you have your spare time and you can, when it comes to our existence today. I'm, if, and I know a lot of people don't even keep tabs on what's going on. <laughs> How they don't, I don't have a clue. Whatever, teach your own. But all you people out there who are aware, watching, making the right decisions for yourself, your family, whatever. What is it that has your attention the most right now with whatever you... I don't give a shit what, what, you're, what category this fits with you. Current events, global... Local, I don't give a shit. What has your attention the most right now in life when it comes to keeping an eye on something, learning about something? What is it? Share in the comment section below. Comment section below. All right? I'll check it out. I'll be back tomorrow.